<laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, welcome to I Comedy Better When I've Had a Few. We have been talking just before this panel with all of those wonderful convention runners, and they slapped a TVMA on us. Thank you I so love much. it. I love it. This is the first content warning I've ever gotten from a con. It is so appropriate and so heartening to know that they have finally recognized that we cannot be clean when talking together for more than five seconds. Like, you don't understand, folks. When panels with us, like, we start dropping F-bobs and talking about shit, and then one of us will look at the other and be like, What's the rating on the panel? And so it's PG. And we're like, oh, fuck. And then we don't censor ourselves at all. We're like, we've just been informed it's a PG panel. That was obviously an error. <laughs> we were at Anthrocon, I believe, doing uh, the Dragon Show on secondary stage, a room with over 100 people and sitting up on stage trying to do a PG show and failing miserably. And I believe the moment we knew that we had failed at the rating was hearing your child, your child of how old would that be, my friend? Uh, at that point, three. A three-year-old in the audience going, blood ritual, blood ritual. My favorite one was I was doing a con and I got up there and I started talking. And of course it's me. So I get like three sentences in and I start cursing like I say without realizing I'm doing it. And I look around the room and I see like the con chair's face going. And I go, oh, are there any kids in the room? And the whole room points at one table. And I go, those are my kids. They're used to my shit. We're good. Uh, I... I, I'm going to tell this story because it, it's a dear, oh my God, the late great Takaza possibly had one of the greatest reactions to an adult moment in the fandom. Now, Takaza and Duncan were, uh, I don't know what they were doing at that point for MFF, but they were on the board of directors for a, a wonderful convention, the Chicago Convention, MFF, who has a tradition now to bring in a group. They were doing it for the last few years called the Neo-Futurists, or some of you would know it as too much light makes the baby go blind. 30 plays in 60 minutes. Were you ever there? Have you ever been there for that, Boozy? I understand. No problem. Oh, there's the con chair and me watching another con chair remove the microphone from his ear to figure out what's going on in the room. Oh, boy. that's All, always all I hear is someone yelling out, 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 and either the dog peed on something or Lady Macbeth's in my kitchen. I'm not sure which. It could be worse. You could be hearing in, in, in. That means the popo are there. <laughs> so, so we are at the initial run of Too Much Light Makes the Baby Go Blind, 30 plays in 60 seconds. And here's how it worked. This wonderful troupe of improv artists got up onto the stage and said, here is a line of numbers, one through 30. When we say scene, we expect all of you in the audience to shout numbers at us that are up here. We will hear a number, we will grab it, and we will perform that scene. We had a pamphlet in front of us with all the titles for all the scenes. And one of them was just called Attention Whore. It was number 13 or number 7 or something like that. So we're trying to get them to grab 13. The whole 13, 13. And at one point, one of the performers comes out and grabs the other number, 7, we'll call it. He grabs 7. The neo-futurists isn't always comedy. The neo-futurists base their comedy off of reality. And this gentleman walked to the front of the stage and started telling us the story of his coming out. He walks to the front of the stage and very clearly and very eloquently starts to describe the nightmare scenario surrounding his coming out. And in the middle of this story, the story that has the audience on the edge of their chair, because once again, we are furries. So many of us have gone through this moment in our lives. He has connected with every single person in a 400 person audience. They are waiting for his every word. The female actor comes screaming out from backstage and snatches the number 13 off the fishing line and rips off her top, bearing all tits a-flapping. 
I am standing next to Duncan and Takaza, and now they are both leaning on me going, oh my God, what have we done? The neo-futurists had never told them that this would be part of the show or that anything like this could happen. She is now running through the audience saying, look at me, look at me. Takaza is on my shoulder, almost sobbing. This is the first and last pair of tits any of these people are ever going to see. But the part that got me that I will never forget is that man standing on the edge of the stage, still telling uninterrupted the story of his coming out at no point during the hysterics of the room, during the round of applause, during the standing ovation, did he Stop telling the sob story, this beautiful, heartfelt story of coming out. And as the attention horror left the stage, he said his final line, took a bow to the biggest uproar of applause I've ever seen. And that was one of the greatest surrealist moments I've ever seen at a convention. And it's such a privilege to share it with two wonderful people like Duncan and Takaza. Uh I am watching the captioning system as you are telling that story. Oh, how bad? Uh, well, first, whore is W and a bunch of asterisks. It sounds about just, right. Just to let you know. Secondly, uh, he wasn't telling a sob story. He was telling a sub story. Nice. Uh, the number 13 became a math problem for a moment. Okay. I accept this. <laughs> well... Uh, you you've uh, performed on Anthrocon main stage, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I, that was a leading question. I performed question. on Anthrocon main stage with you. Yeah, it was a leading question. You're supposed. It to was a stupid it. question. Like, like, you do a lot of substances. I don't know if you're setting me up for a joke or if you've just forgotten. What? I don't know what you could possibly talking about. Give me that substance. <laughs> Like, for God's sake. What I, I wanted have, to ask. I have watched John at a convention. John, for those of you who don't know, John is like Alkali's keeper. John is a, like, I'm convinced Zanny just pays them a, a, an au pair nanny fee when we go places. I have watched Alkali stand up and go, did somebody say drugs? And Alkali and Sean, just like a fucking magical hairy Viking, running out of the Wisconsin night, surrounded by snow. It's time for bed, Dan! <laughs> so... When we played Nero, for those of you who don't know what that is, Nero is a live-action role-playing game. Imagine D&D &D in real life. He was second in command of my adventuring party, of my crew. Now, there is a skill in Nero called uh, command or control, or basically all it is is a spell that makes me your best friend. Our rival group, who are friends of mine, I've been friends with everyone in Nero for a long time, so it's not uncommon for me to walk off and hang out with them for a little while, but they walked up and was like, oh, Keldrak, Keldrak being me, Keldrak, how are you doing today? I command you to be charmed. Well, I didn't have a magic shield up, so now I'm their best friend, like, hey, why don't you come with us? Out of game, that weekend was the first time that myself and John were able to hang out in about three to four months. So here I am wanting to hang out with my friend, but I just in-game got charmed. I'm their best friend. They want me to come with. Of course I'm going to go with. We're half an hour into the module, half an hour into the dungeon crawl, when here comes John walking up in the middle of a battle and grabs me by the collar, dragging me backwards. Now, I am an aloof person. In John's mind, what it was is, oh, my God, we came out here this weekend to hang out, and you just went and took off with your other friends. And he's like, hey, very politely, we have, we have a lot of very open communication with each other. Like, hey, dude, we really want to hang out with you this weekend. It really kind of sucks that you got pulled in them. Can we go do something the moment you're done with this? Like, oh, you know me. I just got to be with my best friends. He's like, yeah, but your friends over here went, yeah, my best friends need me. Yeah. Your best friends? Yeah, my best friends. Your best friends? Yeah, my best friends. I command you be charmed. Tell them! So we start fighting all the other people as he goes, you do not charm my ogre! 
we are hanging out this weekend. I love the the scream. You do not charm my ogre. That's because- <laughs> You have no idea how often we yell that at people at cons when they're trying to seduce you. Um, <laughs> I got a spit take. We're good. That's really good tequila ass. <laughs> my my oh. personal favorite, and this is like comedy better uh, when Alkali does it. It's like comedy better when I... Uh, but I, I was talking to Alkali, and I said, you know, the worst part about this for me is like, yeah, the audience, and we don't get to talk to people, we don't get to see people, we don't get the feedback, we don't get to see each other. I'm like, no, fuck all of that. You, you like, lovely person who is concerned about all these social aspects. The worst part of it is they don't even have to pay my airfare, and still none of the international conventions want me. <laughs> I told you what's happening. They think our accents are too thick. <laughs> was, it was one of the best things I've ever been told. I, I was, uh, we were talking about me doing uh, the, the, the big Germany con. Uh, I have forgotten its name because I am drunk. What the hell? Well, the big Germany con in a castle. And I was told. Euro Thank you. I have been Euro- drinking since our the, last panel. The largest con in Europe. Which is a continent. It's your up, not my up. <laughs> well, I was told that the reason it would be very difficult to invite me to the convention, and with a totally straight face, he tells me, your accent's a little thick. I'm like, I have an accent? He goes, did I say accent? I mean, you talk too fucking fast. <laughs> like, ah, that's fair. Yeah, that's the Chicago in me. <laughs> that's why I always love that. Oh, your your accent your accent is too thick. <laughs> yeah. that, that wasn't a German accent. I don't know what the fuck that was. That was perfect. You nailed it. <laughs> oh yeah. Like there, there's furries I know where like either you designed computers, not you design computers, you designed them. You are the creator of computers. Or you have a drug cartel. Filled with fox fursuiters. Either way, I'm in. One of the, the, no, not one of the, the first day I met this gentleman, we were in a room when he found out the person sitting next to him was in control of primary tech support for the western part of the United States. <laughs> That was a great, like, and I, I've stayed, I stay in touch with that person. And like, every time I have a problem on the West Coast, they're like, you want me to shut off their internet? <laughs> I'm like, don't piss me off or a giant tiger will take out your cell phone service. That's, not a, fra- that's not a phrase many people get to say. I get to say it. I know a ferret who crashed Sweden's economy. <laughs> one time. What? One it only time. takes one time. It was for less than a second. For less than a second, I toppled a country. Leave me alone. Got into so much accident. It was an accident, but I got into so much trouble. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well. We are 15 minutes in. That's our uh that, that's the intro. Yeah. At this point, yeah, that's that's the intro. Have we oh, even I... said our fucking names? I don't even think we've said our fucking names. I we... think we just we just immediately launched into Hi, how you doing? Welcome to Comedy Better. Let's tell you the fucked up shit we've been doing. We well, control the internet. We do... <laughs> we've toppled countries. <laughs> By the way, I'm Hank. Um, you know, it's like those guys over there are Q. We're a pair of V's. Call us W when we stand next to each other. Like, ooh, so <laughs> fuck the Europeans. What's your name? <laughs> Kage. Um, <laughs> As you can see in the corner, my name is Alkali. I am from the Dragon Show. Thank you very much for being here, Boozy. You don't have an identifier. Why don't you introduce yourself? All right, my name is Uncle Kage. Uh, I, I find it better not to have an identifier because then 
Anybody who's not familiar with my work can't say Boozy said. They'll go with whatever name I give you, and that will be what goes off on the internet. Will be whoever's name I gave you. So, hello, my name is Kitra, and I'm the con chair of Furthermore. Excellent job. This is working out well. Chat, we are going to throw this one over to you now that we are 20 minutes in. Since this is I Comedy Better when I've had a few, that means I am your host today because I sent the email to the convention first somehow. <laughs> Actually, no. No, you didn't. No? I was, this was initially listed. I saw the draft schedule. This was initially listed as Monkey Knife Fights. Then you sent their email. Then I got a message from somebody in programming saying, are you doing both Monkey Knife Fights? and I comedy better and I said it's the same panel when Alkali and I are doing it together it's the same panel yes. and suddenly the schedule changed to comedy better and then they released a tweet and the tweet read we're having Alkali Bismuth and Zanny the Blue from the Dragon Show at Furthermore to do comedy with Boozy and I'm looking at it and I'm like you know I recorded my album at your fucking convention last year before the lockdown and I got fourth billing <laughs> behind Alkali and Zanny and the inanimate Twitter account that is their mutual pot. It's the same people. You, you build them twice before you build me once. Now I have a feeling I have an answer to this question. The email that you sent this convention about monkey knife fights, was it saying, I will run monkey knife fights? Say I don't know what it said. QM sends those. You are assuming I am much more on top of things than I am. Like, I, I you know what I found out? I have masturbation at one o'clock tomorrow at what? six o'clock today. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Are you starting to see why they went with my panel name instead of yours? I had the name, how we would like to run the panel, some of the things that would be in the panel, some of the tech we could use for the panel. You sent them an email with a gif of a thumbs up. Yeah, they're going to go with mine. Well, and I, I couldn't blame them, even if I had sent them all that, because I change monkey knife fights every fucking year at Furthermore. The very first year, it was a question and answer about law. The second year, I had Spark on stage with me. The third year, I did an hour-long comedy show in a ballroom. <laughs> this year, it's me and you. I change every fucking year. I don't think they know what to expect. And every year, I say the same thing. Hey, can I get the recording of that? <laughs> <laughs> well i'll tell you what next year it's monkey knife fights again you get it back hopefully i can be there <laughs> but since this one's mine and since this is i comedy better when we've had a few we're going over to the chat chat here's how this one's going to work you may ask us any question we reserve the right not to answer that question in any kind of serious format if we don't like the question all you have to do is make any donation it's on your honor if you make a donation put it in the chat hey i made a donation jackasses and then ask your question if we do not see it if we miss it go ahead and post it a second time but please do not spam am i missing anything yeah you're missing the part where i just explicitly said that monkey knife fights the first year was a q a and now you're fucking hijacking it for comedy better you asshole <laughs> I thought you'd been drinking long enough that you wouldn't notice. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm refilling my tequila. <laughs> oh, we actually were talking about, because, like, we do this panel. This panel of Monkey Knife, whatever it's called. If it's Alkali and myself on it, it's the same basic format every time. We sit there normally with somebody like Uncle Kage or Pepper or somebody like that on the panel with us. And the whole purpose of it is to bullshit with each other for your amusement. And a lot of times the conversation are the conversations that we normally have, believe it or not. So let me tell you about Fur Reality a couple of years ago. Uh, we're at Fur Reality and we are doing monkey knife fights. So I got there late. Uh, to the con, which was uncomfortable because I was one of their guest spotter that year, uh, but I got held up in court. So I get there. And the next, we're doing monkey knife fights. Uh, I, I had seen Alkali that day. I knew he was there. We had done stuff earlier that day together. And Alkali disappears. 
And Uncle Kage and I are heading to stage when somebody pulls me aside and says, Alkali has met someone and is entertaining at the moment. And if you know Alkali, you know what that means. I'm not going to be explicit on here. That's Thank his you. business. So we're sitting there and we're on the panel and it's like five, 10 minutes into the panel. We're just, Kage and I are going back and forth to try to hide the fact. And then you hear from the hallway, somebody yells, Alkali's coming. And I yelled back, okay, but when's he getting to the panel? So he comes running in. Now Alkali gets a message after their friend that they had been entertaining sees the panel. And the message from their friend read, I just watched that panel. Did Boozy know what we were doing? And Alkali says, I think he may have. And Alkali, how did they respond to that? So next time he's free. <laughs> I said, I told him to sit back and email, but just said, Boozy wants to know if he can just watch. The next day, I said, I said, so they get back to you? Because we're sick fucks. I mean, oh, we are. Say, we're, we're, we're horrible fucks. people. Um, so the next day, I, I said, I said, they get back to him and alkalize like they left the chat after I asked that. Um, <laughs> I do remember, I think I've described you to more than one of my friends as if we're ever in a darkened room looking into each other's eyes and we see a soft glow coming from the corner, a spiral of smoke going into the air and a soft southern draw going, oh yes, it's boozy and do not acknowledge his presence. He spooks easy. <laughs> Yeah, you make it sound like like it's some fucking true lies bullshit in the room. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, what's that sound of it? Don't spook him. <laughs> Don't spook him. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wild lawyer. <laughs> They're an endangered species in this fandom. Where the wild law are. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, we are kind of sick fucks, and I think that I'm gonna have you tell the story of the convention where you found the adult telegram chat room and how you made sure that no one got laid that weekend. Well, uh, we, I, I show up at a convention. You're there, obviously. Uh, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and I show up, and when, and when I arrive, the board's like, oh, why don't you all come on up to the, to the board suite? Because it's late. I mean, like, I, I if I have work that day, I get to conventions late. Like, I'll pull in at midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. a lot of times. So, like, if you're like, oh, Boozy's got to be here, but I haven't seen him yet. It's, it's because I'm driving or I, I had to be in court that morning and couldn't get away. So, I get there. It's like 10, 11 o'clock. And uh, it's a smaller convention. I think it was, like, their first year. It's winding down. They invite us up to the board suite. So, a bunch of us go up to the board suite. And we're sitting in there, and we're eating, and we're talking. And one of the board members says, oh, have any of you seen the Not Safe for Work chat? Like, they're talking about this right beside me. And I look, uh, like, this is the look. Like, the, has anybody seen the Not Safe for Work chat? The con chair sees my face and says, nobody give Boozy the link. So, of course, everyone else on the board immediately sent me the link. Yep. I joined the chat immediately. Now, I joined in the midst of people arranging something. So, everybody missed that message. Boozy B has joined the chat. It goes up. It goes off the screen. And it becomes very obvious they don't know I'm there. And I'm watching through the weekend. All these pictures get posted. All these just really erotic thing showing up and I don't say a word I'm bringing it up I'm scrolling through it I'm putting my phone away the whole weekend two straight days Sunday closing ceremonies we go out to dinner we get in the car to leave I jump into the chat and I send my first and only message into the chat which was I hope you all had a great time and just remember I've seen all of your dicks now and then I left the telegram chat now, you may think that that's the funny part. No, 
The funny part is the person who it was their first furry convention. It was their very, like, you walked them up to me, Alkali, and made sure to tell me this is their very first furry convention. Yeah. It was their first furry convention. This motherfucker sends me a message after that. It just reads, so, did you like what you saw? <laughs> He was very happy to see you in the chat. What? He asked for an introduction. I would never deny a fan access to my good friend or the pictures. Is, is your good friend me or your penis? Uh, because, like, one of those things is problematic and the other's your dick. <laughs> You're the first person who hasn't said my dick is problematic. Cheers. <laughs> So <laughs> I heard stories. <laughs> I've heard st um, we, but this is a great way to start this set. Uh, we represent the furry fandom at random times <laughs> in our life. And I don't mean that as a blanket statement. This is when we are the furry fan. No, no, no. At certain times, myself, this gentleman, con chairs, anyone who has been on stage, you do represent the furry fandom at some time in your life. And, uh, your story reminded me that I had to represent the furry fandom at a convention called Yomacon. Oh my God. Yes. I've heard this story. It is wonderful. I'm so happy that this all happened. Yomacon was a very interesting convention. Yomacon was a 30,000 person anime convention on the border of Canada in somewhere, maybe Michigan. I don't know. I was lost and I found it. But they invited me. Why well, I'm It's just... like in Detroit. Yeah, that's right. That's it. It's Detroit. Thank you. Wait, Do... whoa, 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 No, we're going to backtrack. Mm hmm Real quick. Sure. You just referred to Detroit, a major U.S. city, very yeah. well known, yeah. auto capital of the world. Absolutely. As somewhere on the border of Canada. Nailed it. Maybe in Michigan. Nailed it. Look, my mate moved to help me out. Where did you go? Moved to St. Louis. Told me, okay, I got to go to St. Louis for a job. And my mind switched out St. Louis for the mall capital of the world. So Minnesota is where I thought they were moving to. That didn't go well for me on my first road trip, but shut up. Well, I get invited to this convention. I'm the guest of, uh, not a guest of honor. I am a guest. I am one of over a hundred guests invited to this convention. There's 30,000 people. There are guests that program video games. There are guests from YouTube. There are guests from all over the place. Myself, Pandez, Uncle Kage. We were all, Irani, I believe too. We were all invited to be the furry guests. We were being announced It's in like 93rd billing. And they told us backstage that we were going to be announced as a group, the furries. They are here to be furries and they want to say hi. And all of a sudden, they started calling us up one at a time. And I'm apparently last. Well, I found out later what had happened. You see, going to this convention, they asked me for what we would call the, the, the uh, 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 introduce yourself in their con book. How do you do that? How do you introduce yourself to a group of people that you know have no idea who you are? So I wrote mine. In the third person, I wrote a blurb of me wrote, writing a blurb, and it ended with, and if you want to know anything about me, read the first letter of every sentence. And all right, solved it. I'm very proud of it. I send it into him. Well, now it's Thursday of this convention. We are in a giant ballroom where all the staff and all the guests are all meeting together. And of course, I'm thinking, oh, furry conventions. We're all about to hang out and have conversations and have a few drinks together. The person who ran the convention came up, stood in front of everybody, said, this is everybody, and then left the stage and people started to leave. And I did not like that. So I said, what's in my pockets? Well, I had seven flasks and a small tin cigarette case filled with joints. I'm going to get to know these people. So I grabbed all my furry friends and I said, I am going to introduce myself to exactly 10 people. When I am done with that, we are going somewhere and drinking. And I ran around the room finding the biggest groups of people saying, this is a flask, drink from it. My name is Alkali. I'm a furry. Would you like to hang out? 
I um uh, I would like to point out because the chat is now making fun of me, saying Boozy doesn't know Detroit is on the border of Canada. And Boozy That's, does know that. Yes. The 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 issue is Alkali could not name what the the largest I believe city in Michigan that is on the border of Canada and referred to it as somewhere on the border of Canada. I think in Michigan. If it makes you feel any better, the reason for that being I couldn't get Port Huron out of my head. That's where I used to cross the border when I would go play Nero when I was a teenager. So, yeah, literally could only think of Port Huron while tell telling that story. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, oh. I don't get called the stage with the rest of the furries. I get called the stage after to be introduced. By motherfucking John St. John, the voice of Duke Nukem. And as I walk out onto the stage, he goes, this, ladies and gentlemen, is Alkali Bismuth. And he likes tequila. The son of a bitch had heard that there was a sociopath at the pre-meeting who ran around to different groups of people offering them scary alcohol and weed and then took most of those people out of the building where he got them all destroyed. This and sounds as, like the best horror movie ever. It absolutely what was. What happened? A man in a top hat offered me liquor and removed me from the building. Absolutely. I walk out onto stage and there's John St. John. And let's be honest, I'm nobody. This is John St. John, somebody whose voice has been in a video game that I've been playing since I was a teenager. I am smitten. I am thrilled. And he has just been delivered on a tray a glass of tequila for me. And I look at him and smile and I realize that I can pay him for his gift. So I pull my flask of a beautiful Blanco tequila hold out my jacket and start pouring it into my pocket because I had a bar glass that I needed earlier in that day in my pocket and was able to trade him tequilas on stage. We became immediate friends, which led to that night after he did his pro sex panel, don't ask questions, wandering around while trying to find substances to enjoy. The man is amazing and I cannot wait to get him to a furry con. If there is anyone who understands how wonderful a good group of people who know how to be not only a good audience, but are there to have fun are, that's the man. I cannot wait to introduce all of you to Duke Nukem himself, who I watched put a vibrator on a slanted table and try to get into a shoebox while his wife laughed her ass off. Cheers, my friend. I, I am assuming that you all found illicit substance that night because my end of this story was I had the telegram notification from Alkali go off at like 1.30 in the morning that weekend. I brought it up, I looked at it, and Duke Nukem wished me a happy anniversary. Yo, <laughs> in a room filled with people. It was a little disconcerting. I'm not going to lie. It was also 1.30 in the morning on my anniversary. So we both knew what you were doing, making donut holes. Sleeping. I was sleeping. <laughs> oh, what was that it? Sorry, dude, you're a lawyer. I assume that you have never gone to bed in your life. <coughs> no, I go to bed all the time. I don't sleep very often, but I definitely go to bed all the time. I spend a lot of time in bed. <laughs> Why? I come home some days and look around the house and at my beautiful, loving children in the living room playing with their toys. And I go, I'm going up to my room. I'm like a surly teenager as I approach middle age. <laughs> I, I just go in there, turn on The Cure and watch Star Trek. Nothing wrong with that. Now, my friend, I couldn't help but notice a little bit of movement to your side. Is that still happening? Uh, that will be happening again as soon as the movement to my side locates the splitter and cord for them to have headphones as well so they can hear what's happening and not trying to read our lips. In that case, the moment you have that happening, I will be having the same thing happening. So why don't you change out the sound? Well, that's happening now. Apparently. That's happening now on my side, too. We need to up the gain on my microphone because I'm moving it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Alkali is talking, and so am I, but I don't know what Alkali is saying because this is the end of my headphones. I just want to point out, this is what keeps our friendship strong, and especially over the last year, is at any given moment, I can just unplug his loud ass. And Fair my, enough. At whatever he says, as I see his lips move, it's very worthwhile. And then I plug it back in, and normally he's talking about something like a bathhouse or uh, or, you know, what his new endeavor and growing endeavors are the garage are, or sometimes the overthrow of small Caribbean nations, uh, Caribbean, Caribbean, uh, Caribbean, Caribbean, Caribbean. Caribbean. Ah, fuck, I can hear him again. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, coming to the stage at this point, I would like to introduce QM and Zandy. Oh my God, it happened. Did it work? It worked. My, it worked. My, hey. Mine will be here in a second. Oh, I was so close. Well, while that's happening, yeah. I'm going to pour myself some tequila. Congratulations. Oh, I, hear, I hear things. Well, uh, now you can see things too. Uh, you actually have to get close like you like me. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just... I've been inside of you. Act like you enjoy my company. Um, <laughs> I've been inside of you. One, 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 one has verbal skills. One does not. I don't see how these relate to each other. <laughs> anyway. Uh, chat, let us know if we have any problems with the audio because both of us just made major changes. And again, do not forget any donations. Feel free to tell us you made a donation and ask a question to anyone in the panel. We will all answer it, and it will not be the answer you're looking for, but we'll do it. I can actually scoop a little closer. You should. I know. Yeah, we keep sitting there like, tell us if you made a donation and ask us a question it's on the honor system and you know what you lazy motherfuckers you're not holding up your side of the bargain like you're not even lying to hold up your side of the bargain like i, I love you you're being honest you're like i'm not giving these fuckers what money. have you done but you know lie 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 that alkali lies a lot <laughs> lie like it's someone on name. the internet asked you your dick size I don't lie a lot. I sell things to people who don't need them because they're rich. It's not lying. It's the economy. Okay, coming on the heels of me yelling, lie like someone on the internet asked you your dick size, it really makes it sound like you're a gigolo. I don't jiggle unless I've had jello. Yeah, I'm like doing things off camera. I, we don't need to know Cut that. Up. Okay. <laughs> That's for the OnlyFans. Okay. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, <laughs> Alkali is going to talk now. <laughs> For the only band. God damn it, Boogie. <laughs> All I like, right. I like the delayed reaction on the OnlyFans line. Uh, <coughs> Ebony. Eb Ebony? I can't do that. A-B-N-I. Help. Ebony. Ebony. Uh, Steve made a $25 donation to know what should techie folks... <laughs> Chroma key behind Boozy. I don't think the techie folks have chroma key capability. This is Zoom. <laughs> We're using the same software that kids use to do chorus classes online for a furry con. <laughs> <laughs> like on your end, it looks really professional. On my end, it looks it like looks I'm like talking weird. to the principal. I'm in Zoom. This is a Zoom call. Oh, I, I actually did talk to... Uh... Are, are the school counselor with the shelf behind me. No, really? Oh, that's amazing. They I just chroma key the, shit into the background. I forgot to take down the lit sign in the corner. Uh, it's not up there anymore. We took it down after that. I had a, a small movie theater sign in the corner that read furry porn. Um, <laughs> she said nothing. Well, I mean, what are you going to say in that circumstance? Like, so, do you think you pass along any kind of bad habits to your... Never mind, so... I like the fact that Mint Kitten, my oldest child, has turned people into furries. And has done it just by talking about the furry fandom and, and showing her friends the furry fandom. And the thing is, is her friends who have become furries all have social media accounts but i don't think very many of them realize uh 
that the mint kitten I talk about is the same mint kitten because I walked in on my <laughs> child in a discord call with a group of 12 and 13 year old furries. And they're like, I know this person. I know that person. I talked to this person. This person responded to my tweet and just out of nowhere, mint kitten goes, my dad is boozy badger. <laughs> God damn it. Oh shit. And the best part was the work you're like, you're lying. <laughs> and yeah. and me kids looking at me like, say something. I'm like, no. <laughs> nope. nope. Oh. When we first started doing the Dragon Show, I had to make accounts on all the different social media platforms. And it took a very concerned, wonderful furry to tell me that I had misspelled my own name, thereby failing the entrance exam to most standard colleges. For this person was in chat going, that's not the real alkali. The real alkali has a pair of like, yeah, no, I swear. Fuck. Yeah, dude, it's me. Super appreciate it. Yeah, right. How would you prove it? I'm like, too drunk to prove it. He goes, okay, it's you. All right. I like going into chats and people are like, are you really boozy? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. And every, like, a lot of people who know what my icon looks like on Telegram stuff are like, no, it's really him. And the people who don't, they're like, oh, okay, well, that's not really cool saying you're him. And I'm like, yeah, I know. You should go tell him. You should, he's going to be so mad. Um, of course, we did have to, like, we started taking up uh, placeholder accounts on social media because somebody in, somebody was uh, pretending to be him on Instagram and harassing people. Yeah, I got a message about that. I'm like, I'm not on Instagram. I'm on Instagram now, no, like, yeah. like, as Boozy Badger Esquire or something. But then I wasn't. And they finally went too far, got banned. Uh, uh, somebody else, before I found out they got banned, got the boozy badger name. But they're a charming English person who posts about whiskey, so I'm okay. This is, <laughs> is an extension of your soul, I understand. Right. That works out. Like well, it, We it, have it a question. A... Donation yeah. from Head Fox and Head Fox, and thank you so much for your donated. We're going to give it to the group. Is a deep dish pizza a pizza or a casserole? Neither. It is a cake. <laughs> it is a tomato sauce cake. It is the best pizza. The only the only trouble I had with any uh, name confusion for me is when people started telling me when I started going by Zanny. It's like, oh, uh, yeah, there's a song about Xanax that's really popular. I oh. shit you! I shit you not, Zanny. I <laughs> shit you not. Yeah. When you're like, my name is Zanny now. I'm like, oh, do they not know about Zanny bars? <laughs> No, like so we're, we're the same I, I age. The How sheltered was your childhood? Or the Casey Pretty Anthony sheltered. Trial. Very. Do you remember what she called the nanny? Oh God. Yeah, Zanny the nanny. Yeah, Zanny that the nanny. Was a thing. Yeah, I she gave the kid Xanax to pa make her pass out. Yeah, I also found out there was a another Zanny the nanny who apparently killed kids or something like that or or something. That was You're a news story. so good at picking names. Shut up. So, so what I'm hearing here uh, is I, I we need to hire I. Zanny to babysit. Bingo. So I recently changed the I because I can't decide on anything. So yeah. A little um to the chat. If we get another donation, it is. I just realized, and correct me if I'm wrong. It is very easy for us to turn off our green screen and leave a chroma key background for the convention to screw with. So if you would like to donate, myself. Why is there a badger biting QM? Because sometimes you get kinky. You know, if somebody donates. $300. One donation, $300. I'll open the cabinet. No! <laughs> I love you. Well, people are considering <laughs> those donations. We do have one from Onyx Flame. Onyx, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, Onyx so has I. a question for Boozy. Uh, we are going to open this up to everyone again. You said you were approaching middle-aged. Would you say you're being optimistic? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, like the vultures no. are circling. You're not in my will. Um, <laughs> wow. Like, Jesus Christ.
face. You're yep. approaching me, aren't you? Like we can see you, man. We we you smoke. We watched you drink on stage. Like middle age was a while. Like you turned sixteen a while ago. Maybe we need to reclassify this. <laughs> <laughs> After this pandemic, I'm like, I hope this is middle age. Yeah, I hope this is only halfway through. Jesus Christ, I don't know what's happening tomorrow. <laughs> and we have the donation. I'm changing it now. One second. Wait so it would be now. How do I turn off our image on the green screen? I got you. Yeah, you know how to do that. Go ahead and yeah, click off the eyeball. This. Nope. The background. Turn it into a green screen. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. Wait, did somebody actually make the three hundred dollar donation? No, no, no. They somebody made a donation so that we turn off our okay, green screen. Okay, thank God. There it goes. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh... Hooray! Now we're all natural, if you will. Uh, Aethis, Aethis said, "I donated thirty dollars. What fursuiters do you have a crush on?" Oh, what do I have to choose? If you, if you feel it. They're fursuiters. The Head Foxen has donated three hundred dollars. What? Well, <laughs> oh shit! Thank you. What's Eddie the rating donated... on this stream okay, again? Yeah, what is the rating on the stream again? Oh, <laughs> uh, we put a TVMA so you can do everything they did on NYPD Blue, which includes murder. So who the <laughs> fuck cares? Yeah, right. Thank you so much. Holy crap! Wow, I am speechless. I hope you saw it. Uh, yep. <laughs> um, I adore you. Also, someday I will need to understand have, why that is there. Is it for the booze so it goes children. down smooth? We have, we have children in this store so lot. Sometimes we have sex down here. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. You know, when I first like started doing the studio and I joked that this was definitely some old man's jerk off room. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely some old man's jerk off room. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, we got it. They they did it. Like there was a bunch of donations. Well, somebody wants to know what the game is on the top show. I have a story about this game. Hold Do on. It. Do it. When we were remodeling, we opened this cabinet, which is just like a World War II uh uh, emergency medical cabinet that I painted black. It was already here. And there was shit all over the cabinet. Oh, hey, buddy. Well, I'm glad you came down, like, now and not five <laughs> minutes ago. Uh, and in that cabinet was a mystery DVD or a mystery CD-ROM and My Baby Boy for Nintendo DS. Oh, what no. the fuck? Awesome. <laughs> and when we opened it to find out what was in it, it was empty. It's so scary. Did There's you hear a, the scream? There my was kid, a miscarriage. My kid started. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Your my kid started a cult around the game. That's terrible. That was great. Oh, God. So, no baby. What the fuck? Remember I told oh you goodness. about, uh, on the last panel, Boozy, I mentioned the uh, Stonehouse Park, the campsite that we owned. Yeah. It was called Stonehouse Park because the house on it was made of stones transported 300 miles back in the 1800s. It was actually a historical site, so we could not make changes to it, meaning we needed to use every foot, which meant we had to organize the cellar. The cellar that the people before us had just left all their stuff down there. So upon finding about 40 empty coffee cans, a shelving unit literally the size of a wall of a normal apartment, like 20 cubby holes wide shelving unit, on one of them was a fake book. And inside that fake book was a king's ransom in heroin. And we yell at each other like, holy shit, Steve, you're not going to believe what I found. And from upstairs, Steve's mother, the woman I have known for most of my life, the first person I met before LARPing, she was the queen who became the healing guild mistress in game who took care of everyone like they were her own child, screamed down the stairs, did you find narcotics in my basement? Because I officially own those now. Oh my God. Nancy was at first squared years one and three and won the, uh, uh, what's that card game? 
uh, the bigger blacker card. Uh, uh, cards Against Humanity. Yeah. Nancy won Cards Against Humanity every time she played with furries because Nancy was a nurse. And when she pulled a card that had the word vagina on it, she goes, is this supposed to be shocking? The female genitalia? <laughs> vagina, you cunts. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Nice. 80 year olds doing that win conventions. That's how that works. That's amazing. <laughs> well, that's how Kage's mom won cards against humanity. I love how Kage's mother. <laughs> I we mean, were so no. terrified that year. We put Grandma Kage on a Cards Against Humanity panel, and Grandma Kage won. And afterwards, we all went backstage, and Alkali and I looked at each other and we're like, no one can tell Sam about this. <laughs> like, like we will get in trouble no one can oh, yeah. tell sam about this <laughs> oh, oh I, I, i'll tell you what this has been a fun panel it has been it's been a wonderful evening it really we can, has we can go for a little bit are you guys up for going for a if, little if bit? people are still giving money that sounds like a good way to go i'm gonna lean over once more excuse me I will tell you what, my mom would not do well in Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> I showed you no. my dildo. Please respond. Oh my, God. Um, yes. my, my mom, my brother took my mom to go see Scary Movie. Oh. The oh funniest boy. part of Scary Movie for me was realizing that, because I, I was seeing it with uh, my boyfriend at the time in New Jersey. And the same night, my brother saw it with my mom. The funniest part of that movie for me was imagining my mom's reaction to this movie. <laughs> Let's talk about New Jersey. Before you do that, I, I just it reminds me when my parents took me to uh, uh, what was that? White men can't jump. Boy, was that a mistake! Oh my! Your parents took you to White Men Can't they Jump. Sure, the hell did. That had to be amazing. If you know the movie, boy, oh my! <laughs> yes. Child, we, please do not strut on the couch in a diaper at a convention. No, please go upstairs, bud. I'll never forget the moment where uh, uh, Zanny's parents realized that I no longer gave a fuck about what they thought. They I demanded our presence yeah. at brunch one day because his they parents eat brunch. brunch. Yeah. That gives you an idea to where they're at in their brunch. lives. We showed up half an hour early, and I said, I'm not doing this sober. When they arrived, the cups had not been cleared, and both of us were three white Russians in. White they Russians. No, what was it? They were, those were Moscow mules. Moscow mules, thank you. Yeah, a little different. <laughs> they sat down at the table and said, oh... Did you guys want to order? And I said, the next round is still coming. Would you like anything? The tables of power turned in that relationship because when you are Miss Western, Midwestern, you are too polite to say anything. And I decided that they will know me drunk and I do not care. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Like, oh, no, please do My not dad go. just threatened to shoot him at Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Up in. It's amazing how much better dinner is when Up you don't in. care. No. 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 This is. We're all making noises now. Ra ra. This is not one of Daddy's screams. Come on, bud. Ezra, come on. Ezra. Come oh, on. Oh, oh, I no. understand. You gotta go upstairs. Come on. We got. We got. We Why got, we is alkali and a dildo behind my head? Oh God! Oh, I wish that was the first time I've ever shit, had to say that six. phrase. I didn't see what you're talking about until now. Yeah. I, I really wish that was the first time I ever had to say that. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can you can do the ding and ling. So you can anyway. Well, so much for the rating on this panel. No, huh? no, they they uh they, they actually here. gave us a disclaimer. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Just just really quick, uh shout out where it's due. That scene right there that they have the still photo of is from our music video, uh the 12 days of uh a furnace. Uh, uh that is the fifth day, five dick shaped things. To get that shot. She had to stand just off camera. That shot actually starts in front of a normal wall and take the dildo, which we knew had a concave surface, throw it and hope that it's stuck. The first time they did that, they almost put a hole in my fucking wall. Would After that have been the that, sixth dick shaped thing? That's this is how we had to yes. get this shot. When we finally moved over to the fridge, you had to throw it what? 
I'm not. I'm so not kidding. Times. Thirty, forty <laughs> times. Yeah. That shot took so fucking long. Yeah, if you put in drag it five dick shaped things outtakes, it comes up pretty quick. Oh, perfect. Yeah, outtakes. Drag oh it outtakes. my god, is that me in the random Majora the random strawberry Majora shirt? shirt? Yes. We ended up with a random Majora shirt in our house that was in a size medium. He is not a size medium. <laughs> So the way I decided to pick who was going, to, you know, whose shirt it was, was I just took a picture of me wearing it, posted it on Twitter, and said, I've got someone's shirt. <laughs> Listen. Oh, my God. <laughs> if, if your shit comes home with me from a con, it's gone, motherfucker. Um, That's true. We get so much random stuff sometimes. Well, we run a convention. We yeah. get lost and found. How much, but, uh, oh, how much, uh, Oh, oh, furry concoctions do you get that's usually like a weird mix of alcohol and who knows? Actually, I, I love you all, but holy crap. Oh, yeah. I truly appreciate, truly from the bottom of my heart, any any gift that, yeah. that is given that, that's amazing. I don't know why. We're, we're just people doing weird crap. However, if you are thinking of giving us homemade alcohol, right? no matter how well made, if there is stuff floating in it, we might not drink it. My I hope you will make ex exception for my Kreptika, though. Of course. Oh, of course. Oh, oh, oh. This is more so the bottles we bring home that the glass has started to erode away from. Those are the ones that worry me. Oh, oh my. I'm never drinking anything somebody hands me at a con again. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, you you motherfuckers have absolutely no self preservation. So people walk up to you and hand you glasses, and they say, "Drink this," and you're like, "Okay," and you chug it. The fuck, you don't know what's in the fucking glass. Yeah, know, you, you don't know who this person. Like, I've got my own personal Mark David Chapman right now, and uh, I, I'm just telling you, like. I look at their Twitter account. I'm like, oh, this motherfucker's gonna kill me. <laughs> um, we wrote a song. About I, I didn't. I didn't even marry Yoko Ono, and yet somehow I still deserve to die. Um, oh. But the the funny part of this is like when I sat there, I thought I've got my own personal mark, David Chapman. In the back of my head, that song started playing. You know, your own personal Jesus. In the back of my head, I'm going, your own. Personal, personal Chapman, <laughs> someone to hear your prayers, someone who cares. Oh, that's how you know when you made it, when you get that. Oh my God. Oh. See, I, I, I like that. I, I think it comes from the world that I live in because the lawyer world is a pretty weird world. The broker world is just dumb college nonsense. Mm. So, with us, if somebody hands you a drink, it's not so much a question, it's a requirement. They are telling you, you are drinking this or I will be loud and obnoxious for enough time that you want to leave. But there's still things to drink, so you just drink it. Did we just describe every panel you've ever done? Donate to charity or I will be loud and obnoxious until you leave. I learned from the worst. <laughs> Oh. oh, that sounds about right, actually, now that you say it. <laughs> you know, I had to, uh, this year, explain to my accountant what it means that, uh, like, oh, have you given to charity? And I go, I don't know how to answer that question for yes. <laughs> And then I went into a very long description of what the furry fandom was. And the only takeaway this accountant got from it is, all of you probably should be arrested. That's not how charity works. And I said, well, it works very well. We've saved a lot of animals. He goes, yeah, but you're killing me. That's a real <laughs> conversation. I like my accountant. He's a pretty cool dude. That's amazing. My account's a nice guy. He doesn't understand where all my money comes from anymore. Like it, it, it used to be like, okay, here's your salary and your bonus. And I was like, what is Twitch? <laughs> well, what first is Patreon? Partners. Like last year, because my account's this tiny little man. And like last year, he's like, what is a Patreon? <laughs> and I'm like, it's where people give you money because they like content you produce. And he's like, are you making porn? <laughs> 
Yeah. I said no, and he said, oh, thank God. <laughs> That's a whole different form. That's a M-69. We'd have to fill out the whole thing. M-18+. plus. M-18+. <laughs> I mean, oh I mean like, I was kind of offended because I knew the reason he was asking was he wanted to know whether when he was praying my taxes, he had to visually picture me doing porn or not. <laughs> and then when he was like, oh, thank God, I'm like, you know, you're no fucking catch, Lee. I'm like, just pointing it out, your heyday was a while back, man. <laughs> like, there's some people on the internet I know, they're giant animals, they'll probably be into you, but I just want to point out. <laughs> like, you know what I love? I love like the 22 year old who they weigh themselves and they weigh more than 160. I'm like, oh, I've got a bit of a dad gut. And I'm like, you are 22 years old then. Shut up. <laughs> you are a midnight snack in dad world. <laughs> I have shit things bigger than you and shit on things bigger than you. Uh... Grow some facial hair that isn't wispy. That isn't wispy. I love it. Call me when you have a pair of new balances and crippling depression. <laughs> oh, boozy. Just a 22-year-old just going, looks like I got a dad gut. Just like, just sets you off. <laughs> oh, no. I'll tell you what. We're looking for one more donation for this wonderful convention. So the next donation, the next question, and I believe that we are going to go deep into it or probably go off on crazy tangents and then call it. I, I love that. We're going to go deep into it. Real deep deep into, into it. it. Real Whatever it is. Real. Oh, my uh, it's King. a clown. Yes. Unless, yes. unless you got a coupon. <laughs> you leave my coupons out of this. <laughs> oh... Uh, I just, can, you better let him out. Oh my god. <laughs> right? I just love that discussion. I found a coupon for sex. I I don't think they make coupons for that. Uh, not they here. Do, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say they do in Vegas. What's the 50% say. off coupon look like? Sex coupons. Oh dear. All right, you know what, here, we're going to tell this one really fast. So this is a true story. Uh, because of my job, I have to know where a lot of the, um, what would you call them? Get a massage and then get a massage parlors are in Chicago. Happy ending. Massage of the night. Massage and a massage. A massage, a massageception. I need to know where the massageception parlors <laughs> are in Chicago. And recently somebody said, hey, I need to know where one is. So I went and looked at all my addresses and one of them, and this is true, went from a massageception parlor to a Planned Parenthood clinic. And I could not stop laughing so much that I had excused myself. Oh, hey. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> location, location. Location, location. 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 <laughs> hey, that's just convenience. I mean, like, yeah. I, uh, like, by the way, and one of the reasons I was really pissed that in-person conventions got canceled is I did the bagel fucking bit at, at Anthrocon in 2019. And in 2020, I was determined to top it. And I wrote an entire piece about abortion. Oh, it is hilarious. No, it's not. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. And, no, I think it's horrible. And I never got to do it on Anthrocon's main stage because I really wanted to see how Kage would react to me get up there going, I'm not going to talk about fucking pastries this year. I'm going to talk about murdering babies. No. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm, I'm going to ask... It's, it's an old one of mine, but it's still one of my all-time favorite stand-up moments. I believe some of you know it. Do you guys know Stand Up, Fall Down? Do you remember that? You told me about it, but I probably don't know. You might not. This is not one that I tell often because I like it so much that I want to keep it for... But I'm drunk right now, so fuck it. Mm -hmm. Stand Up, Fall Down is a Chicago charity because uh, uh, the whole reason I, I enjoy doing this, I used to MC uh, back in high school. That was what I did for the improv group. I was just an MC. I was the straight man. So to be able to actually sit here and be goofy, yeah, no shit, right? Me That's being the straight man. man, yeah. And one of the things that uh, I was... Uh, you have no idea how happy I was to be there. I got to MC for an event called Stand Up, Fall Down. And all it is, is a charity event at a bar in Chicago where you go and there are five comedians. They're all going to do their tight 10. So it's a 50.
two-minute stand-up show. But the moment they walk off, they are going to go again once the loop has completed. So the person that goes first will also go sixth. They have to do another tight 10. The second half isn't so tight. That is because as they are off the stage, they need to sit at the bar and all of their drinks are free. However, they must be paid for by the patrons. In other words, you pay, the money goes to charity, and that comedian gets a drink and must finish it before he goes up onto stage. He may bring one drink with him up onto stage. We begin Stand Up, Fall Down, and number three is a new comedian to the stage who it is announced has never drank before in his life. Now, luckily, I know Dragor. Dragor is a snotch, a snotch, snotch snob? Yeah, a scotch snob. So I knew a term, and I got the entire bar into it. The legal night, never having a drink that is under 21 years old. This comedian went out there, and he, he fan-fucking-tastic. He had a very tight 10. Everything that he did flowed into one another. I was genuinely surprised. He was a very good stand-up. <laughs> and then he went to the bar, and for the first time in his life, drank and drank and drank. You know you don't shoot a good scotch? He did not know you sh don't shoot a good scotch oh, and no. had a lot of good scotch. Oh, no. It was his turn. The snotch snob was so mad. The snotch snob was so mad. Shut up. Oh, the snob, the no, resident snotch snob. Ah, uh, resident scotch snob of schnapps. He's drinking schnapps, that snotch snob. That's okay. snotch snob. That I is love very so hard much. right now. Dragger. You, dude, you should totally have a scotch with Dragger sometimes. He taught me, I taught him tequila. He they, taught me yes, scotch. They did. Thank you. They. Yes. So, I introduced this gentleman back to the stage. I am looking at him through the entire introduction. I am worried because this gentleman is stumbling backstage. He's moving a chair so that he can lean against it while standing backstage waiting for his introduction. This is the whole point of this. This happens every time. We're ready for it. We're going to get him off that stage. It'll be fine. And here he goes. The introduction. I leave the stage and he does not move, but I have to leave the stage. The stage is empty. And as though he knew the feel of the audience, he finally steps out, pushing the chair in front of him. It is so loud, dragging this, this stage chair, the chair that you would see at every venue for every wedding you've ever been at, for steel. <laughs> all the way to the middle of the stage, sits down in the chair and pulls a Granny Smith apple out of his pocket while staring at a girl in the front row and devours one bite at a time, cork up the entire apple from the bottom of the apple to the stem this elongated stem, which he has in his mouth and then finally spits out and says, I couldn't tie it into a knot. Then grabs his chair, gets it off stage while muttering, I'm in love. It was the greatest moment of comedy I have seen in my life. The man is a genius, and I wish I could find him again. And that was Stand Up, Fall Down, an event that we will create one day, and it will go poorly. That's awesome. What the hell? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. One of my all-time favorite moments. That man was a genius. The, the con has just announced their charity number. As of this moment, they're at $6,386 to continue the tradition of Furthermore. Wonderful. Woo. I really quick want to jump out there. Uh, I had received some messages today about this. I just want to remind everyone that right now in these, um, in these specific times, there are going to be conventions that are going to close down. I was told that this convention needed money to carry on. So let's really think about this for just a moment. Are we going to say that the convention shouldn't collect money so that they can't donate to charity next year? 
I am 100% for this convention, making sure they happen again. As a convention, you have one job. Make sure you happen next year. Thank you guys for doing this. I'm so sorry that it came to this, but everyone, this is our charity because this will help the animals. If this convention goes away, their charities don't get their year to year to year donation. And let's, let's be clear. It's not cons are going to close down. Cons have closed. Cons have closed. FAU is gone. For reality is gone. The larger cons, Anthrocon, MFF, BLFC, those cons are better equipped to weather the storm. They're by no means uh, completely out of, of the woods, but they are better equipped to go a year or two years without holding an event that helps fund the next con. Your smaller cons, furthermore, uh, fur squared. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the ones that are sitting there and going, we made it through one year, but we're not going to make it through another. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And again, don't forget, at no point does this reflect ill on the cons. Smaller cons do not have as much control over their contracts. There is an act of God clause that should have taken place during this COVID time. But you know what? That act of God clause that would let conventions not hold their event is controlled by the state. There are conventions who do not have a choice. And please, please do not ever think that a convention was irresponsible and that's what caused it closing down at this time. Some conventions literally don't have a choice. If you have to hold an event and you can't, you're done. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we're not saying conventions aren't irresponsible. I've met you all. You all are the most irresponsible motherfuckers I've ever met. But, <laughs> you uh, run basement con! That's not irresponsible. That's carefully organized chaos. Well, I mean, to be fair, you just kind of created basement con and, you know, let us deal with the uh, logistics. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I covered that earlier. I, I basically said my management style as a con chair at Basement Con is every time someone complains, it says, you know, we can do this better. I'm like, great, you're in charge right, you're of it. I've got to go over here. Um, yep. And then I, then people are like, somebody's fucking up. I'm like, take it up with them. I put them in charge of it. Why, why, why are you talking? Don't talk to me. I don't care. Like, the programming needs to be tighter. Talk, talk to the programming person. <laughs> I, then they'll talk to me and I'll be like, do, does it need to be tighter? And they'll be like, no. And I'll be like, okay, fuck that person then. Um, I don't, that sounds really familiar. Like, it sounds like the solution that I would see in a musical. Like, <laughs> sir, there's this problem. Well, no, you're the boss of it. What? And then they just take off. I don't know why. Oh my God, I just wanted to twerk, but now I'm buried in paperwork. <laughs> Basement Con the Musical. We Basement Con the Musical. We got it. Stay away from that fence. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> hey there, sir. Are you so dense? You should not touch that fence. You'll die. Da 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 da. You'll die. Snakes Why does that deer the... look like a dragon? <laughs> Snakes on in the, the wall. Shower. Snakes in the shower. Cowboy. <laughs> hey, I've got one. Uh, Boozy, you and I get to be on stage all the time and, and, and get this question asked constantly, but there's somebody in this panel that I don't think I've ever heard okay. the answer to this. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to wait. QM. Yeah. At one point, you also found the furry fandom. You didn't just allow Boozy to drag you in and say, here, you had a first furry fandom experience as well. Yeah. Well, um, I was dating a guy for a little bit who invited me to Anthrocon. Oh, wow. It didn't work out because, like, he lived in, like, he lived in South Jersey, and at the time I was living in, like, East Central PA, so it was a distance thing, and we're like, yeah, this is probably just not going to work out because at the time I didn't drive, so... <laughs> So hold on. Well before we all met in furry, you knew about furry? Kind of. Like, like he like he's like, oh well, it's about like it, it's a convention about anthropomorphic <laughs> characters and and like like the sound. Do you think they're still in the furry? Oh. I, I think about that all the time, actually. <laughs> Do you think they're so fucking oh. pissed right now? 
Oh, they'd be pissed. Yeah. yeah what I have I know. done? Like, right? I am just so happy to know this now. <laughs> this is my favorite moment. Like, somebody's got to walk up to me one day and be like, Hi, how you doing, Boosie? I love your stuff. I fucked your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> Do you remember... Um... No, you you might know my my first furry meet that I have first like met other furries. Yeah. To 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 help people out, uh, to date it for them was floating around at that party. What? At this meet was floating around the script for the furry episode hey, of CSI. Hey, somebody oh else God. just walked yes. in. Wait, what? Yes. Somebody else just walked in. Here, we don't Who have did? Headphones for you, but oh, I think we have an app. The, the programming hey. director yeah. from Anthrocon oh, just appeared in my studio with cigarettes and a child. You know how to do it. What's the noise from Final Fantasy when okay, you get into a tech? Ash, Ash now knows how convoluted the studio is set up. Like, you all see, like, oh, it looks nice. And I'm like, there's the old toilet and the pile of boxes and the broken dishes. Oh, yeah, and you don't want to see the stuff we moved out of this room. And the broken and, printer. Yeah. 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 Oh. we got to get the glass fixed on that. Yeah, we all right. Just I'll tell you what, chat, just to screw with the convention then, chat, next person who donates, if you donate, we'll drop our green screen and show you what our studio actually looks like. There you go. Technically roll up, but yes, drop. Oh, yeah, we'll roll it we, up. Right, we fixed that. I, I would have to, like... We, we used to have this green screen upstairs? where we could just kind of pull it down, <laughs> but it kept literally falling while we were sitting out here watching TV. Yes. Ash, get in here! I only see your arm! Ash can't hear you. Oh, good, yeah. I can say whatever I want about Ash. Ash, you mother... Mother, you're a mother. You have a hat, and I'm gonna look really aggressive because you can see me, but you can't hear me. Ash? You're gonna think I'm saying horrible things. You're a phenomenal person. I <laughs> love your read. glasses! They can still read. There's a thing. You know I, I have can been found out by technology! Run! Scurry! <laughs> Like the, the, can they can't lips. hear you. There's captioning dipshit. And I um, can read your lips. That's, that's true. That's true. Hi, Ash. Uh, Love you too. <laughs> oh, boy. Donation made, Shukin. All right. Oh, what? Uh, you three need to talk for a moment. I'll we need to thing. roll up. A, can you do it yourself? I probably had that you point. Go. Ash, how was your you flight go. from the West Coast? Oh, lovely. I have my first you class, so I don't ride with the peasants. What the fuck, man? Like, immediately. I what? flew first class. The peasants riding coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's what everyone expects. Like, like, you know, I I traveled in style. They didn't just ask me if I was vaccinated. They vaccinated me. Well, All on the plane. <laughs> I flew with, so the flight was great. I flew in Alaska, so I didn't have any problems. It was direct to Philly. Um, a very nice person picked me up, so I didn't have to spend the airport money for the rental car. Oh, that's and, nice. I've uh, been here ever since, and I now have a child crawling over me. Yeah, he, what, he, he, what he wants to do is get onto the couch to be on camera. Because he's a little ham. He is a ham. There's nothing wrong with ham. Yeah, yeah, especially with tomorrow sharp I'll be driving cheese. down to DC Spar first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm driving down to DC first thing in the morning. Oh. Uh, and I'm doing a, a trip down there. So my week has been packed with seeing everybody and how is the grandmother penguin uh so my mother is doing quite well uh she and i had a lovely day of working in the kitchen good um which was great except for the fact that she forgets where she put things and the cabinets haven't moved in 20 years <gasps> and it's still the same knives from when i was 10 oh. and i'm 30 well that's oh. true. i'm sure they're in need that. of sharpening you can't sharpen serrated knives oh. child did you just bring a charging cord down here oh. yes, yes, you yes did. he did and up oh wow that's the studio for alkali it's a garage yep, that's our studio alkali's got the best studio you we know, don't I, have a garage but we need one uh, honest, honestly, I never. We need a, 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 a shed. We need a shed. We do. 
we never really got the concept of the no. box that protects you from weather when you move from one place to another needs a box of its yeah, own. Mom. No, let's turn this into a studio, put a giant ass TV out here, have lights that sync up with the TV, and then watch porn whenever we're not streaming. Truths. Truths. Small coyote, please go upstairs. <laughs> Don, I am to I am totally jealous of how good you look in purple silk. Oh, no, thank no, you. No, no. That is cute, bro. I, I mean, not everybody can pull off purple floral silk. You got it. Well, thank you very much. No, yes, she no, does. No, also, no, no, Ash needs no, to join no, Club no, Robe. I believe that I do have Boozy and QM in Robe Club. I think oh, we're yeah. all in agreement. Wearing a towel is the best. Oh, oh. His mom got me a uh, a, a, a Vera Bradley robe for Christmas with little polar bears doing little things on it. I found a matching mask. Ooh, I am nice. so happy. Coyote child. <laughs> Small child, please do not climb on guests. It's okay, my phone's in the other pocket. <laughs> so, speaking of masks, Boozy, you saw this picture. Coyote. Oh, adorable. <laughs> Uh, during our last Stellaris game, Miko, who is playing the party animals, a race of peacocks that have taken over a quadrant of the galaxy, they it's were sitting time. in this garage with a COVID mask on time, with a guys. beak on it because they were the party animals. Also, they're winning. Masks have power. Fauci was What's right. I mean, we learned what from Persona. Masks of power. Masks of power. Because you never see it coming. Did you say race of peacocks? Uh, yes, Miko is oh. playing a race of peacocks. Don't ask questions. Oh. Very confused. Birds of I... power. Is yes, Ezra. What was that noise? What That's noise? That's my mouth. <laughs> Ferrets are loud. Are you talking about the dog? The dog? That's Trey. That's Trey. Did he wants to just call me the dog? Oh. No. Our actual oh, dog's oh, upstairs, oh. like, whimpering because he's not allowed in the fun. Mm -hmm. Now that everybody's downstairs, the dog's like, I want to be down there. I ah, think it's a tripod. Tripod oh, oh, is adorable. Oh, 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 yeah, he's oh, not doing well either. Oh, 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 he's old and falling apart. I, I think you're a little late to call him Son, falling apart. He's got not act weirder than we already are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a game we we, we are, can both both be done. Yeah. So I, I've got a story to finish us <laughs> off on. Dude, you may or may not know. This week we had plumbing problems. We had Ezra. What we have? A hot water. Trey's coming downstairs. Okay, what did okay, we have? We didn't have the tub in the hot water? We did not have a hot water trace coming downstairs. Did we have a hot water situation? We had a hot water ah! situation. And we had to have the plumbers out to fix it. This kid follows the plumbers around the house asking them for hugs. They give him hugs. They go down to the store later and he looks at the cashier at the gas station and says, I want to kiss. <laughs> I hear about this and I go, oh, you're going to get kidnapped. Ah, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Bye. Bye. What the hell? Bye. Bye. We have three minutes left. I would like to go to the three people sitting on the other side of the camera. Uh, best down. moment at this convention. Not necessarily this year, but at this convention. I told this story earlier, and it will never not be uh, my very first time at this convention being in my room party with Fox and Mandy from Curtail Comic and my handler, Harper, who had brought out this beautiful harp and was strumming it softly and singing Gaelic tunes softly as the rest of us talked about erudite topics and sipped scotch. And that's when security shut us down because we were being too loud. First time at a convention, first time at a furry convention, I got shut down for having a room party with somebody playing a harp. Trey, 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 it's okay. Amazing. Okay. Okay, buddy. Going over to QM. 
Uh, uh, it doesn't even need to be this con, but if you have one for this con or best moment at a furry party, one of those, regale us with a moment that you had in the presence of the wonderful furry fandom. Well, I, th I, I think I will go with another another story from this convention. And finally, it's, uh, I ended up in con. The tripod got down here. Things have become chaotic. I ended up in con ops at like oh. 2 a.m. There we go. After like we had an incident with the children. <laughs> Our oldest okay? had pulled yeah, something and ended up going out to karaoke at like 2 a.m. And I got the kid back in the room. And that was pretty good. Things had finally calmed down, and I'm like, I need a minute. <laughs> I, um, so then I go down to con ops. Um, <laughs> Oh, you know, you where know they the just start bringing this, out the liquor he, no, you, he one bottle ah! by one bottle ah! by one bottle and we just sat there all night and just he shot the visitors. shit and it was the greatest thing ever and uh the, the head of con ops for this convention kiba is a friend of mine uh she brought out snacks she gets like a uh, a japanese uh like snack tray box. A weekly, you like were a, throwing a, a monthly snack Oh my box. god, he's gone to the electronics. <laughs> and so I'm snacking on things, and I'm like, what, what are do you, you doing, dog? Me? I don't know, but it's delicious. <laughs> things yeah. have gotten a little chaotic. The dog's under the desk. Okay. Let Ash know that Ash gets to answer next, but we're going to go over to Xander. Zandy, Zandy, you have not been to this convention yet, so you will get to answer one of two questions. Did they hit me or a, one of your no, favorite moments at a furry centric party, or B, the favorite moment that has okay, not happened yet at this convention. You can just make one up. What do you got? There goes the, there goes oh, the TV cord. <laughs> Did we lose? We lost a boozy. We I have the lost. The camera's unplugged. The TV cord's unplugged. Boozy might be being black bagged right now. <laughs> the dog is, oh no! Do not try to climb up from under the desk onto the couch! Who knows what's happening right now? Let your imaginations just run wild. No! 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 Stop! This is not a good idea! They're straight up. Stop encouraging him, Ezra! Tell me what's This is my favorite moment from the from this time. Ah! There we go. <laughs> is when Boozy was murdered. And turned into Boozy oh Hub. <laughs> All right. Trey, come on. Trey, come around back. Come on. Stop trying to kiss me, child. Can you hear All now? Right. This is happening. You don't care anymore, do you? Nope. Well, come on, Trey. Come on. We're small enough. If you're small enough, I'm oh my God. Trey. Boozy Trey. Hub. Oh. Dog, no, go the other way. <laughs> I've got a cigarette. This is my favorite moment. Yes, yeah, cigarette. Yeah, yeah. I'll follow you. Okay. Whoa, okay. Hey, I'm back. Okay. What a great. That was amazing. Come on, Ezra. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Aww. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter anymore. What the hell just happened? <laughs> So, <laughs> we have to create an absolute chaos over here. This is the, the dogs greatest. are plugging shit. The toddler's dancing in a diaper. Yeah. I don't you know, even know what their chair looks like right now. I don't even know if I'm audible anymore. I have no clue. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not allowed to say I have a favorite convention over First Squared, but this moment is bringing a lot of things into question. What the flying shitberg is going on? Help me! I don't even know if we're audible. I don't even know if people can hear us. This is hysterical. I hope they can hear us. Oh my god, I love you guys so oh much. What is, they can hear it. He's oh god, my like tech just came on like, hey, we can hear you, Boozy. The dog unplugged everything else, but he didn't get your mic. Um, this is Conops. We can hear you loud and clear. 
Yeah. Thank you, Con Ops. We appreciate it. And Eddie the Weather Fox, I will not miss this convention for anything. This is amazing. So what are we going to end on? I think we end on that. Can I come to your brother's, Dad? My brother's? Yes, we need Daddy's to Daddy's brother to lives in Kentucky. My brother lives three said, Do you want to go see Uncle Dick? Give up the line ticket. Brother. We want to see all of you, brother. I only have one brother. <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been and always will be the greatest episode of iComedy Better When I've Had a Few Ever. Because we say so. Because we say so. <laughs> right. You are now king. Queen. Damn. That works. Your Majesty. Yeah, Your Majesty. The right. quote doesn't work if I change it. It's from Space Ghost. Oh, that's true. That's Please you stop know, I don't know my go. nose. I'm also king. I could I can work that. <laughs> I'm I'm all the genders. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither. Boozy, do you have anything to close this out on? Help. My name is Alkali. We have been here with Boozy, Ash, Zanny, and others. I'm others. Did I not say QM? God, not. I am sorry. I am very drunk yeah. and shocked and high. Holy no, it is cool. God. It is absolutely fine. I love that. You, oh my God, I miss you. QM, we need to go on a giant road trip again for now. Yes. yes. Everyone, one at a time. I'm Alkali. Boozy, <laughs> your turn. I'm traumatized. Yeah. yeah. QM, I'm your too. turn. Yeah. Say your name, buddy. Yeah. You say your you say your name, buddy? <laughs> there you yeah. go. Now do I want and I don't want to go upstairs. Ash is dealing with the dog. This has been a comedy better when I've had a few. And if anyone asks, we're all Uncle Kage. Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night.